Hello and welcome. I'm Laura. I'm a Canva Creator Ambassador for the UK. We are called Canvasadors. I am here to help you learn, understand and get to grips with Canva and utilise it for your business. So today I'm going to answer a question I get asked a lot and it is about Facebook banners. Now, Facebook tend to change the sizing of their banners sometimes, and obviously mobile and desktop are completely different sizes. So I'm going to show you today how we can create a lovely Facebook banner from scratch that works both on mobile and desktop. OK, so I'm going to go over to my screen and I'm going to get started. So here we go. We are looking at Facebook banners. So this is my Canva account and I'm going to show you how to create your banner so that it is visible on both mobile and desktop. But first of all, we need to find the sizes of Facebook's current banners. So the best thing to do is to go over to Google and have a look at what the current banner sizes are. So at the moment we have got desktop, which is 820 by 312 pixels. Uh, mobile, which is 640 by 360 pixels. OK, so we need to try and find as uh, these little logos or images here show you the safe zone to be able to create your design and it be visible on both mobile and desktop. So I have created a template to help with this and I'm going to explain it to you um, so you can understand how I have done this. So this is my template. What I've done is I've taken these sizes and times them by three, times by three because you can times it by whatever you want, it's entirely up to you, but by three it just gives you more pixels so that you have a clearer image, clearer graphic on your Facebook banner um, <clears throat> and profile because Facebook can press all of their images. So if you use these numbers here, the chances are your image will be slightly fuzzy or blurry. So times them by three, which is what I've done here. So 1920 by 1080 is for mobile. 2460 by 936 pixels is for desktop. So I have times them both by three. So once you have got your numbers here, You've times them by three, so you've got your mobile and your desktop. We need to create a template. Now, we need to create a template that is going to accommodate both of these sizes. So we need to take the wider or the bigger size from both mobile and desktop. So desktop, 2460 is the width. That is the biggest of the two widths. So we want 2460 by 1080. 1080 is the bigger size of the heights. So 2460 by 1080 is what we want to create. So we go over to our Canva account, we click create a design down to custom design. I've already popped it in here because I was having a play earlier. 2460 by 1080 px pixels. This is what we want to create. So create a design, custom, Add in those two figures, click Create New Design. So now we have our template size. So now we need to work out whereabouts is the safe space? How far can we go to the edges and the top with the information we want to put onto our banner? That is where these blue squares come into play. OK, so this one is for mobile view. So if I just, just the corner, you can see 1920 by 1080. And this one is for desktop view. I go over here, 2460 by 935, so thereabouts. So these two represent desktop and mobile. And then in the middle where they overlap, you have your safe space. So I need to create two squares. So I'm going to do this to show you. So 1920 by 1080 is mobile. So I've gone back to my template and I'm going to press the R key on my keyboard and it brings me up a nice square or a rectangle. So I can now use this to create my um, squares for desktop and mobile. So I know where my safe space is going to be. 
So the first one I'm going to do is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And we do that by dragging out the corner. You can see the numbers changing. So I'm going to drag this out until it's the right size. So 1920, so 1920-ish by, what was the other one? 1080, 1920 by 1080. So 1920 takes a little bit of wiggling by 1080. Keep going. 1920 by 1070, 1921 by 1079. It hasn't got to be spot on. A pixel out here and there is not going to matter. So this is my mobile view. So if I centralize this, so that is my mobile view. I now need another rectangle, so R again, and I want to make this the desktop version. So I want this to be 2460 by 936. 2460 by 936. So I'm going to drag it out. 24. Two four where are I? Two four sixty by nine three six. So we go back up. You can see the numbers are changing. So you can nine three seven. Two four sixty by nine three seven. There we go. And I've centralized it. So what I'm gonna do now, so I've now just added two squares, one for desktop, one for mobile. What I'm going to do is just change the transparency of these because I don't really want them that bright on my screen. I want to be able to see them. So I've just pressed this one here and I can change the transparency of individual elements. <clears throat> so now you can see there's a darker square appeared in the middle. That is your safe zone. So if we add another rectangle, and then if I just do this, you can now see whatever you put within the yellow square will be visible on both mobile and desktop. This is our desktop version. This is our mobile version. So if you add something here, it will be seen on desktop, but not on mobile. If you add something here, again, it will be seen on mobile and not desktop. That is why I create this template so that you know whatever you put in the yellow square will be visible on both. OK, so what you can now do is you can blur the transparency of your yellow square a little bit and lock it in place so it doesn't move. I can't move the yellow square. I can move the other two, but not the yellow square. I'm going to delete the other two because I don't need them now. All I need to know is that whatever I put in this yellow square will be visible on both desktop and mobile. And that is why I create it like this. So here we go, we've got desktop, we've got mobile, and then you've got the pink square in the middle. So when I talk about adding squares and things like that, now you know what I mean by you're getting your safe space area. So I uh, let's add something to this, shall we? I'm going to press the T key. I'm going to enlarge my text box because I want to make my imaginary business name huge. Very good sort of designs. Let's go with that. So this is my business name, for example. I'm just going to show you a quick mock up. I'm going to check. Oh, I love this font. I'm loving this font at the moment. It's so fun and summery. So this is my business name. I'm going to add a line. Um, I love lines. I absolutely love them. Quick tip, press the L key on your keyboard and it will bring up a line for you. The T key brings up a text box. Obviously, you know, the R key brings up a square. And lastly, the C key brings up a lovely circle. So I'm going to give my design a little bit of outside edging because I want something to be visible on desktop and mobile around the edges, but I want to keep my important information in the middle. So I'm going to add a couple of circles just to the edges. 
um, just to give it something on the outside and I'm going to position them to the back okay position to back so they're at the back now um, I'm going to change the color of my font let's go with a nice branded color I'm going to change the color of my line as well and I'm thinking I want to add something to this say for example I'm a florist very random there but let's say we're we're a for a florist so I want to look for some flower elements I can choose particular colors so if I just want blue elements I can choose blue which is lovely actually they're really nice I might stick with them let's go with that one that's really pretty oh I like that um, and you can always click the three dots here to see more like this and it will just bring up lots of other different options for you quite like these this is pretty so I'm keeping them within my um, <clears throat> safe space I'm just gonna add some little flowers around my business name so I could have this could be my logo for example So I'm going to go elements, flower logo, because there'll be stuff like this for logos. That's quite cool. There we go. So we'll pop that there and I will just add um, a text box and we'll go LG designs. We can add that in so it's part of the logo. There we go, I might change. No, I quite like the coloring. So this is a very, very, very quick um, design for my Facebook banner, for my Facebook headers, my profile pages, those kind of things within Facebook. I've kept everything I want visible on both mobile and desktop in this yellow square, okay? So what I can do lastly, I've locked it, I can now unlock this as long as you are finished with your design um, unlock it and delete the yellow square so you are then left with your full design knowing that everything you want visible on both desktop and mobile will be visible you can add more to it if you want but just be aware now you've removed that square you're not going to know exactly where the design um, edges are so i hope that has been really helpful um super super quick video tutorial on just really getting your squares in place so that you can add in this safe space square to create your designs that work well on both desktop and mobile and one last thing i will suggest i believe profile personal profile images are a lot deeper so again you want to keep information at the top um, because there's usually a huge profile picture at the bottom business pages this will work perfectly for business groups if you run a group on Facebook just be aware that uh, not parent T I want a R just be aware that there is a space at the bottom that um, will cover up some of your design so it's 200 pixels thereabouts I've discovered so say 207 um, that Facebook tend to have a stripe across most groups I don't know if you've noticed there's a color band and it will say group is run by Laura Goodsell or group created by or affiliated with something like that in the bottom left hand corner and it does tend to cover up some of your design of your banner header so if you are wanting to put this on your Facebook group create your square so that you know exactly where your information can go but then maybe add another square at the bottom which is 200 pixels wide so that you know that's possibly where the colored band will be so you can keep everything just above it. it hasn't got to be perfectly above it because there'll be situations where that 
won't that will move but just to be aware that it may end up covering the bottom part of your design so I will delete that and there we go Hey, so I hope that made sense. I hope that was understandable as well. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. I'm always happy to help or come over to the Facebook group, um, group create on Canva, and you can pop any comments um, into the group as well. Just pop a post in and I'm always happy to help. So yeah, just overview of Facebook banners. I didn't want this video to be too long. I could ramble on forever um, about the whole design aspect of it, but I just wanted to get across how to create your banner and keeping all of the important information in that safe space square so you know both mobile and desktop, everything that you want to be visible is actually visible. Okay, so that is it from me today.